Were there any major events that your sorority held on campus, maybe while you were president? That we got in trouble but, for, uh, or? <laughs> <laughs> um, gosh. Yeah, we did um, Run for the Roses, which was a big arthritis run around Patriot Circle to raise money um, for juvenile arthritis. Mm -hmm. uh, we did trash pickups along the highways. We did a lot of philanthropy work, which is great. We also held some fun social events. Um, we were always very supportive around Mason homecoming. Anything that was spirited that, that really brought the school together, we were there to show our pride. You know, So I think that we were very active in the community. I can't think of anything huge that we did. We didn't make any huge donations or anything. I think we painted a bench out there. But, uh, <laughs> You graduated from Mason in 2001. What did you do after graduation and how did you end up where you are today? It's crazy. I was actually in class and I got a phone call and I noticed that it was a it was from Los Angeles and I had interned the summer before or maybe it was a year before and I saw it a year of school to 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 finish and it was Mark Steinis who is the anchor of Entertainment Tonight and um and it was 2001, I was gonna graduate, and he's like, Ange, I need a personal assistant. Here's the deal, you come out to LA, we'll work on your tape, we'll get you groomed, you know, and maybe in a year we'll, we'll start shopping them around so that you can get your first job in affiliate news. And so to me, I was like, oh, this is awesome. I'm going to, you know, got a job right out of college. And so that's where it started. I went to Los Angeles for almost two years. This was right after September 11th. And, um, and then from there, it took a while, but I eventually found a good job in Iowa, took a major pay cut, went to Sioux City, Iowa, worked there in the tri-state area, Sioux City, uh, Iowa, South Dakota, and Nebraska covering the tri-states. Um, and then from there, I spent about a year and a half there before I landed my job at WIS, which is a very strong NBC affiliate in Columbia, South Carolina. And that's where I was prior to coming, ending up here. So it took about six years to work the broadca broadcast circuit, but definitely well worth it. Of your work, you say that you wanna use social media to engage the viewer in our news coverage. Can you share with us how you do that? Gosh, we do it every day. Look at my tweets. <laughs> <laughs> follow my tweets. Follow them. Oh my God. Um, on a daily basis, um, I'm known for in the morning tweeting traffic tie ups and problems and news of the weird, anything that's out there that's kind of odd um, or somewhat helpful, money saving tips, that type of thing. Things that will be retweeted that people that can go viral. Um, and then, I, I guess in a breaking news situation, for example, uh, it was probably more than a year ago where River Road in Northwest DC, a uh, water main busted. And I don't know if you remember this, there was a huge rescue mission. They had to fly in people. It was, it was just chaos. And in moments like that, just like with a snowstorm or any other type of breaking news situation, when your boss says we're going into continuous coverage, pretty much you have an empty plate. You're not going in there with a show that's heavily produced. You know where you're going to be coming in, where you need to fill, how long you need to fill for as far as being on air. Um, so that was a situation that just sprung up on us in the middle of the morning show. We're going straight through to noon. So um, from there, we're, we're trying to fill time, trying to line up interviews. And I'm sitting there on my phone. I'm like, wait, you know, I'm, I'm getting these tweets and I'm following these Twitter people. And so all of a sudden in my ear, they're like, OK, talk about what you're finding on your phone. Go over to the web center and you've got two minutes. And, and so in situations like that where I'm getting a tweet from a chef in Bethesda saying, I've just lost my water my water pressure, uh, we're gonna have to close the restaurant. Immediately, you're able to engage the audience, the viewer, people in the community that are impacting others um, in ways that you would have never been able to do before. And from there, you know, you're able to establish communication, get updates, and relay that information. And almost these people become their own citizen journalists, and you're just the person that's relaying the info and organizing it. And, um, and it's really helpful because it really does let you be in all these different places without having to leave the comforts of your studio. So that's one way, and that's through Twitter. Um, and I guess through uh, my new segment, which is pretty much experimental, uh, my blog, we took it to TV, and the whole idea is that we cover our communities by enlisting you to be our boots on the ground. So by submitting your pictures and your videos and your events, I go through them and I filter them out. I decide what's arable, and um, and we're able to share what's going on in your neck of the woods. You know, it's been kind of fun, and and people get the shout out, they get the credit, and then we in turn are able to show that we're in all these different places and that that we care about what's going on. Do you out think there. people are responding really well to that sort of? 
Yeah, I, I think it's it's still very new, mm-hmm. and so I I think it's responding well enough that I'm still on the air with it. <laughs> and this was in August, and what are we in February? And um, and we're looking at at growing it in, in other parts of the newscast. But um, but yeah, I think that the crossover and the use of cross platform journalism, because what you see on TV immediately goes on the web, and then it goes and then it's posted everywhere, and then it can be embedded. It's just it's a really neat concept, and so. I think it's awesome when I show up at Mason and I hear Coach Larry and I say, oh my God, you know, because it, it builds a brand and people begin to know it. And I think that as long as you know how to do it right, it can be valuable and it can be resourceful. But, um, but finding that balance is a challenge for a lot of people and a lot of news organizations. And I'll be the first to admit that we're playing around with it. But so far, so good. Knock on wood.